And we're talking about the Ducks. 37-34 over Boise State. 2-0. and Your boy here trying to be positive. Hey, 2-0 is 2-0. It's I just know. it's not a it's not a great 2-0. No. But they keep dropping in the rankings and because again <laughs> they're down to number nine. Well, anyone that watched like I said, look, they should be forced. They are not the ninth best team in the country. Had they been playing either one of these games, had they been had they played a top fifteen team, it, it, they would be 0 and 2. They're just they're not very Isn't good this right a now. That's a great lesson in preseason prognostications and everything are so dumb. This is why I always say this. Yeah. Like we just know nothing until no. the game starts. No. So why do we even why do we even bother? At any rate, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I would say, though, again, I'm trying to be positive. Yeah. Alabama struggled. Mm-hmm. Notre Dame lost. Yep. Penn State struggled. Yep. Um, Oregon. A lot, lot of teams looked funky this year. Kansas weekend. State struggled. Oklahoma yep. was in a dogfight yep. against Houston. So, um, you know, you're not alone. It's just that the way it looks is really concerning moving yep. forward. And I mean, I don't know when's that. How many games do they have before Ohio State? I think what I think Ohio State's the sixth game, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's a buy in there after uh, after the Beavs. Let me pull up their schedule. Yeah, let Let's me see. give me the schedule. So you got the Beavs, yeah, and which won't be easy. No, like uh, look, I, I really and I've watched Oregon State play. I still don't know what to make of Oregon State. First half against Idaho State was a little like yeah, and then you just ran the ball all over in the second half. Uh, this one against San Diego State. San Diego State's offense is dreadful. The Beavs' defense played really well. Offense was, eh, but again, twenty-one nothing. You shut them out. So, like, I don't know what to fully make of the Beavs, but I'll tell you right now, Oregon State's got a chance in this game. Oregon ain't well, blowing anyone course, out right now. Of course, I mean, if you almost lose to Idaho, yeah, I mean, you would it would stand to reason that pissed off Oregon State, absolutely, with something to prove back at home. Yeah, who was beating you. Well, they didn't beat you last year, the but year they beat before. you the year before. And their hair is going to be on fire, and they're playing good yeah. defense right now. So Oregon's got to be a lot better. But who, who's after Oregon State? So they got to buy, and then they get UCLA, who stinks. Yeah. And you got Michigan State. By the way, Sparty two and zero. Where's that game? Uh, that's I, it. I, that's it. Awesome. I think where that's is awesome. that? Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, uh, old Jonathan Smith, who everyone you know, criminally underrates. He got Sparty two and zero. So well, nothing seems easy. And then you get Ohio State. And then Ohio State. Okay, so nothing seems easy right now, but they can win these next three games yes. by just, you know, by doing what they've done these last two weeks. And Being that's, more talented. And that's uh, just, well, and, and gut it out. I mean, look, I was thinking in the second half of the Boise State game, I was kind of thinking, I'm like, dude, this is a battle. This is a dogfight. Yeah. Oh, my God, this genty guy. Ducks, you know, they're not playing well. They're turning it over. Yeah. What else could go wrong? And the, and the fact that they won... Again, I know this isn't going to help a lot of people because a lot of people just think they should be way better than they are, and they're not wrong. Yeah. That said, perhaps an identity is forming. You're sitting there in the second half. You're going, God, here they are in a battle again. Not all good teams blow everyone out. Mm-hmm. You know, when you when you get dragged into deep water, there is something about character and resiliency and and just freaking nutting up and guys making plays, and they they did that. I, I mean, I I kept thinking about like. Oh, I, it's a bad comparison, but I kept thinking about the Chiefs, mm-hmm. you know, and how they sometimes win games or play with their food. And you're, you're not always going to play great, and it's not always going to look that great. Mm-hmm. But I think it's important, uh, if, if they're going to go anywhere, it's important to still be able to pull those games out. Now, the Idaho one, you, you, you had zero business losing, and I mean zero. Like, zero. Yeah. You cannot lose that game, period. But this one, Boise... <laughs> Yeah, Dude, you to... played so po- well. What I'm saying All is, right. you played so poorly that you should have lost, but you didn't. And that I think is a that is a good thing. Again, I'm trying to be positive. I think that is a good thing about perhaps an identity forming. That is good because you don't want a team cruising through the entire sea. Everybody thinks it's just this straight ascension to the top, and it's not. You're going to get friction. And it's how do you handle that friction? You're not going to play your best, and you need to do stupid things like drop the ball before the damn goal line. By the way, I don't, I don't know, I don't remember off the top of my head who recovered that, but dude, Jaden Lamar, Jaden Lamar, MVP get, of that game, maybe exactly. But get, wait, I have a question about that. Yeah, um, and I will be asking Dan Lanning how on earth that happens. I mean, I, I really it, cannot. It, it's it, one of the things I've I really asked this, can't happened. fathom in college football or in any football. Fathom. It happens way more than I mean, anything. all well, the way back to Deshaun Jackson, I don't yes. get the appeal of dropping the ball Dude. right across the goal line. Like, what is that? Every single time it happens. Ducks have been on the, the good and the bad end of that. Every single yeah, time. did it, right? 
Utah, they, at Utah, Kalen Clay dropped one on the goal line. Byron Marshall did it in the national championship game nearly against Ohio State. Every single time it happens, we come on here and go, how on earth does this happen? Yeah. And yet it keeps happening. And so I'm I just I'm blown away yeah. how a guy can do that. And I my question about the kid who picked it up, did he just pick it up because it was just right there? I think or it was a heads he, up play. I think he, he, he was know. running behind and I think he knew. I he think, knew. I think he had at least an idea because what happens too is it, it if you went back and look at it, the official does not signal touchdown. Right. So when and the, the broadcast did a really bad job at telling us what was happening. Yes. They clarified later yeah. it was ruled a touchdown for Lamar and the, not for the Whittington. official. The official, I, I think, knew. The official kind of when I was looking at it, and they won't say anything. He just kind of sits there, and it's this weird like. Eh. Well, let's see what it, happens. Because remember, if no one touches it, then it's a touchback. You have to have an immediate recovery. And so I, I think someone either yelled at him or he just was running behind the play and was like, hey, I'm not certain. I don't see anyone. Better safe than sorry. Just Better grab safe it than sorry. And he picked that thing up. That is a game-saving play. Yeah, somebody brought up uh, Washington last year. And that's right. You know, when Penix was a little banged up and yeah. they got into some weird games. Yeah, but here's here's the thing that I'm going to push back on a little bit. Because everything you're saying has an element of truth to it. And you're right. You want to be ballot tested. You want to find a way to, to pull it out. Against Idaho, there was not a single player on Idaho's team that would start at Oregon. That, the coach's kid, the linebacker, uh, he was pretty good. I still don't think he plays, but he doesn't start at Oregon. Boise State had two. There's two players on Boise State's team that would start for you. Two. You had a quarterback at Boise State. Dude, that guy. I mean, I, I know he's a gritty kid. <laughs> That kid is not any good. You don't have a single receiver that would even touch the field in Oregon. No separation. Their passing game was non-existent, right? You could stack the box against them. You had no fear of them getting behind you. I mean, their DBs just got blown by your receivers. Two players, two players in two games would start for you. Three would, would probably play any significant amount of time. And you have needed last-second heroics to bail you out of those. So I understand when you're in the NFL or I understand when you're Washington, you're playing conference games and maybe Arizona, like Washington last year needed, you know, to kind of point out against Arizona. I'm sorry. Arizona has the number one receiver in the country. They had Noah Fafita, Jonah Coleman. There are dudes on that. I'm sorry. There are not dudes at Idaho and Boise state outside of, well, there the, was one. Well, and the, the defensive end that they had the 91, the, the Egyptian guy, that dude, uh, the 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 four, Egyptian guy. Well, the four white guys in the Egyptian. They tried everything. We we played four white guys in the Egyptian. Dude, that kid can play. We tried everything. That kid's good. Well, Genty was amazing. And Genty's amazing. And he, he was probably the best player on the field. But he was. Like to me, there is a difference between grinding it out in conference games at the end of the year or in the middle of the season, where you're kind of going through the dog days. You are you have athletically been superior at every spot against these two teams and you are lucky lucky to at least not be one and one and that to me is problematic and someone better figure things out pretty soon because i'm not saying oregon state is great i'm not saying michigan state is great but if you're playing better teams top 25 teams not top five top 25 you're zero and two right now and that team is too talented because you see it. There are absolute physical beasts all up and down that roster. And you see glimpses of it. You do. And there's NFL guys at almost every level. And you should not be squeaking out games against the the, uh, the basically the Idaho All-Stars. You shouldn't. Well, of course you shouldn't. And but dropping sometimes the, it happens. And dropping the ball in the end zone and holding penalties and just I mean, they can't do that again. No. Because that's what I was getting at with Ohio State. You get to Ohio State, you just you're gonna get bludgeoned if you yeah. play like this. So yeah. they, but the thing is, is they know that, they see it. There isn't anybody around here that isn't doesn't have a sense of urgency about it. And and believe inside that locker room yes. they know it too. And Dan Lanning even said it. Yep. He said it after the game. He goes, Look, we were lucky. Yep. We were fortunate. I feel I feel fortunate. Two special teams touchdowns, yeah. that does not happen. That's right. And without both of those, you lose that game. But, it, 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 you know, all I'm saying is it possibly could be the worst they'll play all season. Yeah. And to Boise State, what the hell are you doing kicking the ball to those guys? Like, no offense, but when you look at your two deep and, uh, and you see a bunch of dudes, um, no offense, that look like they're playing at Central Catholic, don't kick the ball. Don't kick the ball to the Oregon returners. I mean, someone over there should be fired. Central Catholic catching strays. <laughs>
this today. Is, that's Joey's not going to be happy with you. You should not. You should not. Like even after the first one. Uh, hey, how about this, guys? Uh, we're not kicking into them anymore. What? And then they kicked it to him again. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Their best teams coach should be fired. All right. Uh, up next, we'll wrap up the uh, the weekend that was for Oregon, and then we'll get into some more um, college football stuff with our college football caribou. I've got uh, hot Kansas takes. All right. Yeah. Didn't they lost? Mm-hmm. But uh, there was something from that game. I mean, nobody cares about Kansas, but I'm I'm. There was something in that game that I want to ask you about. Yeah. I don't know if you watch it. Did you watch it at no, all? No, I was busy watching my hot guys because they. Gapped yeah. it at the end, too. That was a good game. I thought it was over. But there was a rule that came up in the Kansas game mm-hmm. that I can't say that I was aware of, right. and I think it's stupid. Let's talk about it. And we will. Damn it. It is uh, Isaac and Souk on the fam. Another. 